teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po, at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema! Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Ay, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Kumusta po kayo? Uh, matapos po ang isang linggong pagninilay-nilay sa nakaraang Holy Week ay ito na naman po tayo sa ating Monday Habit. Uh, welcome po sa isa na naman nating session dito sa Itulay, Senior High School Physical Science sa oras na 4 to 4.40. Tutor Lester po, at your service. Today, uh, we are on the third uh, quarter, week two. Ang paksa natin ngayong hapon ay ang concept of atomic number that lead to the synthesis of new elements in the laboratory. Ang module na ating pinagbabatayan ay ang alternative delivery mode, a module ng Calabarzon. At the end of the session, uh, our learners are expected to explain how the concept of the atomic number led to the synthesis of new elements in the laboratory o paano nakatulong ang konsepto ng atomic number para makagawa ng panibagong mga elemento. Number two, Identify the different elements formed after the process of synthesis. Kilalanin ang mga panibagong elemento na bunga ng synthesis. Number three, 
realize the importance of the atomic number in identifying the new element's identity in the periodic table. Mapagtanto ang kalagahan ng atomic number para mahanap ang panibagong elemento sa periodic table. Uh, magsimula po muna tayo sa isang pretest na may limang katanungan lamang po. Ang pretest na ito ay sumusuri po sa inyong uh, prior knowledge ukol sa ating paksa ngayong hapon. Piliin lamang po ang sagot sa apat na pagpipilian. Simulan po natin sa unang katanungan. It is a device that is used to speed up the protons to overcome the repulsion between the protons and the target atomic nuclei by using magnetic and electrical fields. A. Spectroscopy B. Particle decelerator C. Particle accelerator D. Microscope Ang tamang sagot po ay C. Particle accelerator Number two, he created a classification of elements based on their atomic weight. A. Rutherford, B. Dalton, C. Millikan, D. Mendeley. Ang tamang sagot po ay letter D. Mendeley. These are elements with atomic numbers beyond 103. A. Super heavy elements. C. Lightest elements. A. B. Gases elements. C. Lightest elements. <clears throat> and D. Halogen. Ang tamang sagot po ay A. Super heavy elements. Number four, he noticed that shooting electrons at elements caused them to release X-rays at unique frequencies. A. Mendeleev, B. Millikan, C. Moseley, D. Sergey. Ang tamang sagot po ay C. Moseley. At sa ating panghuling katanungan, it was created by bombardment of molybdenum by Deuterons by Emilio Segre and Carlo Perrier in 1937. A. Oxygen B. Technetium C. Helium D. Uranium Ang tamang sagot po ay letter B, technician. Ayan. So sa linggo po ito, uh, nakafocus po ang competencies sa nuclear chemistry, particularly uh, on the nuclear equations. So I am sure that this has been discussed already in the junior high school. And we need to refresh your memory on this topic. So hopefully, meron din po kayong dalang periodic table na nasa tabi nyo po. <clears throat> Alright? In order to balance uh, nuclear equations, kailangan alam natin kung anong mga numero ang hahanapin natin sa periodic table. Ang nakikita ninyo ngayon sa inyong mga screen ay ang periodic table of elements. So let us refresh our memory on the details that we need to look at. <laughs> so the number found on the upper left of the box is the atomic number. So the atomic number is the number of protons the element has. <laughs> Bawat elemento ay may unique na atomic number. Uh, the number found on the upper right 
is the atomic mass or the atomic weight of an element. So an element may have different atomic weight, which we call as uh, the isotopes of an element. And the, the character at the center is the chemical symbol of the element with the name at the bottom of this symbol. All right. <clears throat> so let us discuss the key points in this session. Simulan po natin sa atomic number. Uh, gaya po ng nabanggit ko po kanina at nabasa nyo, nababasa nyo po ngayon sa inyong mga screen, ang atomic number po ay ang number of protons ng element. So these protons are the positively charged particles which are found in the nucleus of the atom. Henry Moseley is an English was an English phys, uh, physicist who was able to solve the inconsistencies in Dmitry Mendeleev's periodic table with his demonstration that the atomic number determines the properties of the element. In 1919, Ernest Rutherford was success. Uh, was able to carry out a nuclear transmutation reaction. So a nuclear transmutation reaction, it is a process of transforming the element or the isotope of an element into another element. In 1925, there were four vacancies in the periodic table. And this uh, <clears throat> vacancies corresponds to the following atomic numbers. Atomic number 43, 61, 85, and 87. The elements with atomic number 43 and 85 were synthesized with uh, particle accelerators. <clears throat> Right. So on the next slide, I'll be showing you the periodic or how a periodic table looks like in 1925 that shows the vacancies of the element mentioned. So ito po yung uh, periodic table way back in the 1920s. <clears throat> so makikita natin in the 1920s, ang arrangement ng mga, ele ng mga elements ay katulad na ng arrangement ng mga elements sa present day periodic table. Right. Hanapin natin ang elements 43, 61, 75, at 81. Right. Let's use a laser pointer. So we have here element 43, naka-indicate as question mark. Uh, element 75, naka-indicate as uh, question mark. Element uh, 61. Wala pang nailagay. Then, element uh, 85 indicated as question mark. So, nung mga panahon na yun, uh, naka-indicate na question mark ang mga elements, uh, elements 43, 61, 75, at 85 dahil Nung mga panahon na yun ay hindi pa existing ang mga elemento na nabanggit. Bagamat napredik na ang mga posibleng properties ng mga elemento ito. Right? The particle accelerator, on the other hand, so ang isang particle accelerator ay isa pong device na ginagamit upang smash o pagbanggain ang proton at ang atomic nuclei sa pamamagitan ng magnetic at uh, electric fields. <clears throat> Bakit kailangan po gamitan ng particle accelerator? Dahil po dyan sa prinsipyo yung same charges repel. Ang proton at ang nucleus ng isang atom ay parehong positive kung saan ang proton at ang Atomic nucleus ay magtutulakan at hindi magkakalapit. So with the use of partic uh, particle accelerator, 
uh, na overcome ng protons at ng atomic nucleus ang repulsive forces. So dahil na overcome ang repulsive forces, ito ang ang protons at ang atomic nuclei ay nagbabangga na nagre-resulta nag ng synthesis ng bagong elemento. So tinatawag na naman uh, tinatawag naman na transuranic or transuranium elements ang mga elementong may atomic number na higit pa sa 92. So this row of elements can be found in the periodic table and in this slide these are highlighted in violet. All right. So, simulan po natin with the discussion on Dmitry Mendeleev. So, before the periodic of table, uh, periodic table of elements of today was set as a standard. So, there were already attempts by scientists to organize the elements into a table. <laughs> so, Dmitry Mendeleev's periodic table was an attempt to organize the elements based on their atomic weights. So this is Mendeleev's periodic table. So in Mendeleev's periodic table, so we have here the horizontal rows, which are called as periods. Okay, uh, okay so these are the rows that uh, we call as periods and the vertical columns, which we call as groups. So there are seven periods and eight groups in Mendeleev's periodic table. So may group one to seven and are divided into subgroups A and B. So in each period, elements are placed based on increasing atomic masses. At ngayon, ang ating modern periodic table is credited to the work done by Henry Moseley. So it was Henry Moseley who set out to solve uh, the problem with Mendeleev's periodic table. So paano po to nagawa ni Henry Moseley? So he was able to solve the problems with Mendeleev's periodic table by using X-ray spectroscopy. So the X-ray spectroscopy determines the atomic number of an element. So what he did was that he just bombarded a beam of electrons to the different elements and then measured their X-ray spectral lines. So the results clearly showed that the frequency of the X-rays given up by an element was mathematically related to the position of that element in the periodic table. So the frequency is proportional to the charge of the nucleus, which is the atomic number or the number of protons in the nucleus. So this is uh, the periodic table when uh, the inconsistencies in Dimitri's periodic table were sorted out. <clears throat> so when the elements were arranged according to their atomic numbers, ito na yun, uh, may mga elements, may mga gap, uh, shall we say, and uh, these gaps were the following elements. Ito po yung uh, at elements with atomic numbers 43, 61, 85, and 87. So ito po yung mga elements that at that time were not yet existent. <clears throat> Pero sa ngayon po, uh, these elements 43, 61, 85, and 87 were already filled. So ito po yung mga elements na uh, nasa... Uh, these are the elements that are named as 43, 61, 85, and 87. So these are uh, technetium, Promethium, rhenium, and astatin. So these elements were later synthesized in the laboratory through nuclear transmutation.
So now that we have already touched the historical uh, the historical part of the periodic table, <clears throat> atin naman pong himayin kung ano po ang mga numero at simbolo na nasa isang nucleide as shown in your screens. So in nuclear equation, this is how a nucleide is written. The number on the lower left, this is the atomic number. So, gaya na nasabi ko po kanina, or na-emphasize ko po kanina, the atomic number pertains to the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. On the upper left is the atomic mass or the atomic weight of the element, which is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. <clears throat> and this character here is the symbol of the element. At ngayon naman, i-refresh po natin ang inyong memory on nuclear equations. <clears throat> so I am quite sure that uh, the Physical Science Module 1 has already shown these nuclear equations. So, naipakita po ito nung uh, i-discuss po natin yung how the elements were synthesized in the core of the stars. Then, so ayon sa chemical equations na natutunan po natin sa junior high school, so ano pong tawag natin dito? Uh, ano pong tawag natin dito sa left side ng equation? At saka dito sa right side of the equation. Okay, tama po kayo. So, on the left side of the equation, we have the reactants. So, we have here the reactants or the elements that are fused or smashed together. On the right side, uh, we have the products and uh, the products or the new elements and the byproducts that are formed. So, paano po natin ibabalansi ang nuclear equations? So, para mabalansi po natin ang nuclear equations, uh, dapat uh, kung mag... Kung Ilan po ang total ng atomic number dito sa reactants ay dapat siya rin maging total ng atomic number dito sa products. And the same story and the same uh, the same should also be true with the atomic mass on the reactants and the product side. So dapat uh, kung uh, kung magka, kung ilan ang total ng atomic number at ng atomic mass on the reactant ay dapat equal din dito sa product na site. So, sa halimbawa na nakikita nyo po sa inyong mga screen, uh, we have nitrogen-14 and an alpha particle which is the nucleus of a helium atom. So, the, so nitrogen-14 is bombarded with alpha particles or helium nucleus forming oxygen 17 and a proton. So, ano po ang atomic number ng nitrogen? So, we can see here that the atomic number of nitrogen is yes, 7 po. <clears throat> How about naman sa alpha particle? So, ano ang atomic number ng helium? So if you will look at the periodic table, you will see that the atomic number of helium is equal to 2. And dito naman sa bandang product, ang atomic number ng oxygen ay 8 at saka ang atomic number ng proton of course is 1. So <coughs> So ating i-total ang, se ang 7 at 2 that will be equal to 9 dito sa reactant na side. And on the product side, 8 plus 1 is equals to 9. Ngayon, atin i-add, itotal natin ang atomic mass on the reactant side. So, 14 from the mass of nitrogen and 4 from the mass of helium. So, 14 plus 4 is equals to 18. 
and we look here at the product side so <coughs> the mass of oxygen 17 is 17 of course and the mass of a proton is equal to 1. So 17 plus 1 is equals to 18. So, <clears throat> ibig sabihin, uh, pareho ang atomic number, equal ang atomic number on both sides of the equation. So that means the equation is balanced. So remember, in balancing a nuclear equation, dapat isalang-alang natin na dapat magkapareho ang atomic number at atomic weight on the reactant and on the product side. <clears throat> so now that we have refreshed our minds in balancing nuclear equations, ipagpatuloy po natin ating pagtalakay. So it was Ernest Rutherford, <coughs> yes. so it was Ernest Rutherford who first uh, discovered nuclear transmutation. So, si Ernest Rutherford ang unang nakatuklas ng uh, nuclear transmutation o ang proseso ng paggawa ng panibagong elemento sa pamamagitan ng pag-smash ng atoms ng mga element. <clears throat> so, sa example, nakagawa po ng panibagong isotope ng oxygen si Rutherford kasama ang isang proton sa pamamagitan ng pag-smash ng nitrogen-14 at alpha particle. Ang neutro naman ay nadiskubre noong 1932 ni James Chadwick. <clears throat> ang nuclear equation na nababasa ninyo ay ang pagsasalarawan ng pagkadiskubre ng neutron. Where a beryllium nucleus is bombarded with alpha particles, producing carbon-12 and a single neutron. Ang beryllium ay may atomic number na 4 at atomic weight na 9 na siyang idinagdag natin sa atomic weight ng uh, helium na 4 at atomic number na 2. Ang carbon 12 naman ay may atomic number na uh, may atomic weight na 12 at atomic number na 6. Ang neutron naman ay mayroong mass na 1 at 0 ang atomic number dahil wala po itong charge. <coughs> so kung atin pong if we will get the total of the atomic numbers and the atomic weight, makikita po natin na magkapareho po ang atomic number at atomic weight on both sides of the equation. So this is a balanced nuclear equation. <clears throat> ang technician naman, ang element 43 na hindi pa nadidiscovery nung kapanahunan na nabubuhay pa si Henry Moseley. So, itong technetium ang kauna-unahang artificially prepared element. So, ibig sabihin, uh, this is not naturally occurring on Earth. So, wala po tayong makikitang technetium sa kalikasan. Ito po ay nadiskubre noong 1937. So, nadiskubre ang elemento, element 43 or ang technetium sa pamamagitan ng... Uh, <coughs> pag-smash o pagbangga ng uh, molybdenum at ng uh, deuteron isotope. So, the bombardment of uh, molybdenum by deuterons resulted to technetium and two additional neutrons. Ito naman, ito namang nababasa nyo ngayon, Ito apo ang pinakaunang nuclear chain reaction na ginawa sa isang nuclear reactor sa University of Chicago noong 1942. So a neutron, a neutron was shot or a uranium-235 was bombarded with neutrons. So it produced bromine, bromine-87, lantanum-146, and three additional neutrons. <coughs> So in the 1930s ang pinakamabigat na element known in the known in nature was uranium with atomic number 92. So when elements having atomic numbers greater than 92 were synthesized, these were known as the transuranic elements. So Edwin Macmillan created a heavier element in neptonium, neptonium as shown in the equation. 
So, according to the equation, we have here an isotope of uranium bombarded with neutrons producing neptonium-239 with an electron as a byproduct. Ito namang super heavy elements, ito po ang mga elements that are artificially prepared elements with atomic numbers higher than 103. So these are produced by bombarding heavy nucleus with accelerated heavy projectiles such as in the example shown before shown in the slide. <coughs> so in the example we have here bismuth 209 bombarded with high speed projectile of chromium 54 synthesizing borium 261 with two neutrons as a byproduct. So for our activity, uh, let us try to write a nuclear reaction involved in the synthesis of the elements named as follows. <coughs> so for letter A, okay, curium, which has a which has an atomic number of 96, was formed by reacting plutonium-239 with alpha particles. Mendelevium, with atomic number 101, was formed by reacting Einsteinium-253 with alpha particles. So, simulan po natin sa first, uh, first equation. So, for the first equation, ano po ang element na na-synthesize at ano po ang reactants? Okay, so ano po dito ang na-produce or the synthesize at ano po ang reactant na elements? Right, tama po. So we have curium as the product and plutonium and alpha particle which is the helium nucleus as the reactant. So ayon sa equation, ang atomic number ng curium ay... 96. So we write down 96. So for plutonium, 94 ang atomic number and for helium, 2. At ngayon, let us take a look at the atomic weight. So kung ating pong titignan sa periodic table, um, uh, actually, dito sa equation, ibinigay na po kung ano ang atomic mass ng plutonium. So, we have here 239. So, we write down 239 and then tingnan po natin sa periodic table, we can see that the mass of helium is equal to 4. So, 239 plus 4 is equals to 243. So, 239 plus 4, so that is now the mass of uh, curium. Okay, I hope klaro po sa inyo. And then, our second example. <coughs> Mendelevium with an atomic number of 101 was formed by reacting Einsteinium-253 with alpha particles. So, in this equation, ang ating synthesized element is Tama po, mendelevium. At ang ating reactants ay einsteinium at helium. So, let's uh, let's balance the atomic numbers. So, according to the equation, ang atomic number ng mendelevium is 101. So, ang 101, that should be uh, equal to the atomic number of einsteinium and helium. So, if we will look at the periodic table, the atomic number of Einsteinium is 99 and helium 2. So, 99 plus 2 is equals to 101. And then, in the equation, okay, the, the mass of Einsteinium is already given, 253. So, we write down 253. And then look at the periodic table to look for the mass of helium, which is 4. So 253 plus 4 is equals to 257, which is the mass of mendelevium in our product.
Ayan. Okay, so ito pong third equation should serve as your practice equation. So the equation, uh, it, the equation, in order to balance this equation, uh, kailangan hanapin natin kung ano ang, anong elemento ang reactant at kung ano ang product. So after writing down the product and the reactant, we write down the atomic number of the product. And then, uh, refer to the periodic table for the atomic numbers of the reactants and then write it down. So the atomic numbers should be balanced, of course. At kapag nabalansin na natin ang atomic numbers, balansin na naman natin ang atomic weights. So dito sa, prob uh, dito sa equation, uh, walang atomic mass ang given with any of the reactants of the product so kailangan natin hanapin sa periodic table so we look at the periodic table for the weight of the reactants then i-add po natin ang atomic weights ng mga reactants and that the total of the atomic weight of the reactants should be equal to the atomic weight of the product so, kapag nagawa po natin yun, our equation should be written this way. Yan. So, ganyan po dapat ang ating uh, nuclear equation or the written, uh, the balance nuclear equation for this uh, problem. Right? At yan po ang ating tutorial session para sa linggo pong ito. So, see you next week, same time, 4 to 4.40 in the afternoon. Uh, binabati ko po ang aming mga mag-aaral sa Ipil National High School, lalo na sa senior high school at sa lahat ng guro sa nasabing paaralan. Once again, uh, this is your tutor for this segment, Tutor Lester, para sa bata. Para sa bayan. Ang tabayanan po natin si Tutor Jane sa asignaturang Empowerment Technology. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e life free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!